In this video, I'm going to be going through my five favorite anime and showing off my favorite figures from each of them. So I guess this video will be sort of a mix of both an anime recommendation and a figure recommendation, but quite a few of these figures are very, very expensive, so I, I probably don't actually <laughs> recommend buying them. Anyway, there's not much else to say, so let's just hop into it. So the first anime I'm going to be talking about is Gurren Lagann. It's super popular, you've probably already seen it, and if you haven't, you have to watch it, come on. Everything about it is incredible. Basically all of the figures are of Yoko. While I like Nia a lot more in the story, Yoko definitely has the better figures. And my favourite of them by far is this one, which is Alter's Bounty Hunter Yoko. I just really like the sculpt of this. The pose has so much confidence. I'll always love uh, any design that has like a flowy torn up uh, cape or coat like this. It's super cool and definitely goes with the rule of cool uh, that the rest of the show does. It's important to note that this figure came out in 2009. I, I think especially back then, it was hard to find a figure that nailed the character so well and made them look so cool. Sadly, I don't own this figure. I wish I did. I really, really do. She was around 8,000 yen back when she came out in 2009, which is insanely cheap for a figure if you look at today's prices. But what's scary is if you look at her price now. Solaris is selling her brand new for 112,000 yen. It's like $1,000. It's another pre-owned listing for about $450. And as much as I like this, and I always have, uh, I'm never paying that much for this. I've dreamed of a re-release ever since I saw this when I got into figure collecting, or must have been like six or seven years ago. Uh, it hasn't happened. I doubt it's ever going to happen, but every time Ulta re-releases something really old, it sparks that bit of hope in me that Maybe one day <laughs> she'll get re-released. So yeah, that's Bounty Hunter Yoko by Ulta from Gurren Lagann. So moving from a classic Gainax mecha series to another classic Gainax mecha series is Evangelion. I guess Evangelion has to be one of the most influential anime of the 90s. And for very good reason. The character writing is really good. The animation is amazing. The mech designs are great. <laughs> you can buy Evangelion Crayfish. Thanks Japan. I guess Evangelion also started what's maybe the biggest waifu war of all time, whether you like Asuka or Rei. But we all know Asuka is the best girl. But despite all that, my favorite Evangelion figure is just <laughs> Unit 01. So if you're not familiar with this figure, which I, I actually guess is more of a statue at this point, this is by Prime 1 Studio. And it costs around $1,500 uh, if stock was available, but I think it's all long gone by this point. This is probably one of the only figures that I would spend that much money on, because I love it that much. It is disgustingly large. It's 60 centimeters or 2 feet tall. Look how big it is compared to a Nendoroid, oh my god. I love it. I love it. I wish I had it. It also has a ton of customizability. There's three different head configurations. You can display it without holding anything. It can hold this knife, or it can even hold this gun, which is my absolute favorite pose. The base on this thing is also really, really nicely detailed. I love the damaged buildings and all the debris and rubble alongside the road. There's little cars there, and it just gives you a really great sense of the scale of how big an Evangelion actually is. It frames the whole thing in a way that really brings the whole figure together. And of course, no inch of Unit 01 has gone undetailed. The way all the panels fit together just make this really exciting for me. But of course, to get it now, it's going to be even more expensive. There's also a handful of statues of the other units that match with this one. And if I ever win the lottery, I want that whole set. If I had to stick purely to anime girls for this, I would pick either this jersey version of Asuka, 
uh, by Ulta, which I think is one of the most sought after anime figures. She got a surprise re-release a few years ago and I think she's already back up to being like $500 on the secondary market. She's a really great figure, it's just not something that I've been super interested in owning myself. And then the other one is Asuka's Radio Eva Part 2 by Hobby Max. This one isn't out yet, so I don't know if it's any good or not. I was raving about her in the Ami Ami recap recently, so if I do pick her up, she might be my first actual Evangelion figure. The next anime I'm going to talk about is the Monogatari series. If you're not familiar with the Monogatari series, you might know it by Bakai Monogatari, or you might know the infamous toothbrush scene. Basically the whole thing is very clever, the dialogue is amazingly written, and the visual flair that Shaft puts into the visuals of the anime are amazing. It's one of a kind, it's completely unique. It's not a series for everyone, but I definitely do think it's one of the all-time greats. And since there's a cast of like 10 different waifus to stand for, there's like a bajillion really good figures. Good Smile Company did a series of 1-8 scales uh, for most of the girls in the series. I think they're all based off the cover art of the Blu-rays? I'm not mistaken about that. But most of these are phenomenal. I have two of them, I wish I had more. So I have this Yotsugi, which is the deluxe version. It comes with this special base with all of these stuffed animals on it. I really love the colors of this figure. I think the whole thing just works really, really well. And I'm super glad that I have it. However, the other one I have is this Nadako Medusa, which I think I might like a little bit more. I think the composition on this one is amazing. I love the addition of the sake bottles. Uh, I think the box that she sits on is really, really nicely detailed. But I don't have any real flaws with either of them, other than them being a 1.8 scale instead of 1.7. But I can live with it. But as you can see, there's a bunch of others that are all really good in their own right, like this kiss shot. There's Shinobu with her iconic donuts. Hanakawa on the desk. Senjo Gahara with her stationery, which I think is something that's just so iconic to Bake Monogatari. And I think it's so cool that they got the stationery falling looking as good as it did and as close to the artwork as possible. Kambu is also great with a stack of books. And one of my favorites of this line is Karen with her road roller. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever see a base of an anime figure have a road roller in it ever again. I'm a bit mad at myself for not owning all of these. And then I think my very favorite of all of them is this Sukihi one. Sukihi is a character I don't really like. I just think this is really beautiful especially this alternate color version. There's just something about it I really, really enjoy. I saw it secondhand in Japan. I touched the box, but unfortunately it was like way too big for me to bring home. So I didn't buy her, but maybe one day, as long as the price doesn't get too high, uh, I'll add her to my collection. Also, I gotta say before moving on, the Monogatari Nendos are all really, really good. I especially recommend Shinobu. I love her. Just look at her. <laughs> so next on my favorite anime list is another old Gainax mecha show called Gunbuster and its sequel, Die Buster. They're both only six episodes long and they're both insanely influential to the other Gainax shows I've talked about. The series has my favorite ending of anything ever. I think if there's one series from these top five that I'd want to forget and re-experience for the first time again, it would definitely be Gunbuster and Diebuster. But yeah, Gunbuster and Diebuster are in a very weird spot with figures. And the ones that do exist kinda suck. God knows why, like, basically the only high quality figure of either Gunbuster or Diebuster is neither of the main protagonists. It's Lalk. It's a bit of a simple figure, but I like it. I think the spherical orb base is a really cool idea. And I did think about buying this back when it came out. I just couldn't pull the trigger on something that just that just didn't feel that important to me. And I'm sure if it was a different character, I would be much more hyped. I've saved the best to last, for me personally at least, uh, which is my favorite anime, Mawaru Penguin Drum. This is another show that's not for everybody. It's packed full of symbolism. If you're not familiar with certain events that happened in Japan in the 90s, 
you won't really understand anything that this show is trying to say, but despite that I think the story on its surface level is extremely compelling, and then when you dig deeper into it, it just gets better and better and better. Every time I rewatch it, I find something interesting and new to think about. So it's fitting that one of the first figures I ever bought uh, was from Penguin Drum. And that is this. Princess of the Crystal 1-8 scale by Alta. I love everything about this. I think the sculpt work is amazingly well done. Since it's based on an anime, the character design is relatively simple, but the pose and sculpting of this figure really gives it life compared to all of the other penguin drum figures that exist. It's also got these penguins. These penguins are cute as hell. I think looking at this figure from the back as well is also super interesting because of that sculpting. The dress on this figure has a lot of the things that I just love about anime figure dresses. Especially with that two-tone colour having, you know, that black on top and then the red on the inside. It speaks to me at like a, a primal level. <laughs> I think this figure is excellent, and I'm so glad it came out in 2013, because if this went up for pre-order now, like a decade later, I know Alta would charge like double the price. <laughs> also what are we at, like three of my five favourite anime, my favourite figure is done by Alta, basically. It's kind of insane. Alta's really good. So yeah, that's Princess of the Crystal by Alta, my favourite figure from my favourite anime but not necessarily my favourite figure of all time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what your favourite anime is. As always remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. This has been the Ando Experience and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!